Uh, it's some 18 minutes right after it. Still on the AM show, a show proudly brought to you by Mixi Coffee. Time now for us to talk uh, right to information. Uh, now, the right to information bill seeks to give citizens the right to request for any sort of information from government. That bill has been hanging um, some time back. Sometime last year, we didn't really know exactly what was contained in, in this bill because uh, uh, it had changed hands. Uh, but now we do, and some persons are particularly not excited about the content of this bill. I would urge you to look for it. Just go online and Google Right to Information Bill Ghana. Get the information and read the details because we want everybody to understand what is contained in this bill so that we can all raise our voices to what we think we do not like. But let me introduce to you my guest who would give us a better understanding of the issues. Mr. Um, Akutuampao is a lawyer and a member of the Ghana Coalition on the Right to Information. Hello, good morning, Ms. Ampao. Good morning and good morning to your viewers. Mm. Thank you for your time. So we've been asking for the bill to be passed. And now we are in a stage where at least we know where it is. We, we, we have an understanding of where it is going. What's the issue with the bill as it stands? Well, the bill as it stands uh, will constitute a major obstruction to the citizens' right to information held by public bodies. If it is not amended and is passed in the current state. And because of that, I want to say something that may be a bit surprising. Some of us would not want this bill to be passed into law. Because it I, I thought give we're better off with, with a right information bill. Not necessarily. We are better off with a right information bill that is consistent with the provisions of the Constitution of Ghana and also international human rights norms and standards. But you can have a law that is titled a right to information law, but the contents of which are crafted in such a way as to be an obstruction to the citizens' right of access to information. And we in the Ghana Coalition on the Right to Information believe that the contents of this bill are crafted as to obstruct the right to information. And because of that, we would call upon the general public, especially members of the media fraternity and also civil society organizations to take a hard look at the contents of the bill and advise themselves as to whether this is the kind of law we want or whether Ghana deserves something better. Mm -hmm. One would want to find out where were you when this was being drafted? Well, this bill has been in the making since 2002, 2003. Mm -hmm. And we have persistently, consistently brought our concerns to the attention of the powers that be, be it the uh, MPP government or the NDC government. This bill has struggled across both parties. So you can't say that this, the problem is, is with a particular party. It is with the politicians. They don't want a, a law on the right to information that will open up the processes of governance and ensure accountability and transparency. That is why we have a bill of this nature. And I'm saying that given the battles that Ghanaians have fought over the years for a democratic society in which transparency and accountability are key principles of governance, we do not deserve a bill like this to be passed into law. Right. So specifically, for instance, uh, what, what is in th this bill that you think would not help us? Let, let me take one example. We all know that we live in an age of information revolution. Mm. 
information is churned out in 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 in, in seconds, you know, or, or 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 even less than seconds. Thousands, billions of uh, different types of information are turned out in in this age. And so, and we do know that the timeliness of the information you get, that is what is critical. Crucial. Yeah. Now, if you look at the timelines provided for in this bill, between the time when a citizen makes a request for information and when he may ultimately be given the information, I can tell you it could take as long as almost six months, half a year, as long as almost half a year for, for you to mm. get the information. Mm. And it will be perfectly legal. Because, because, because of, of this law. I mean, if it becomes yes, a law. Yes. So bureaucrats who may not want to give you a particular piece of information you are requesting for, but who know that they don't have a legal basis for giving you the information, can use this very law mm. to delay and, and, and delay and delay until by the time they give you the information, it's of no use. Mm. So, so this is one of the things that we ha have been campaigning for, that there ought to be a far more limited timeline between when somebody makes a request for information and when it is given to him. Just neighboring Nigeria, Nigeria, under their law, you have seven days within which to give the information and a further uh, seven days. In, in, in Liberia, that we all know went through a brutal civil law not too long ago. They passed their right information law. It takes a maximum of 30 days. Okay, that's a month. Yes. In Ghana, <laughs> it will take you almost, as I said, six months. I mean, originally it would, it would take about 21 working days plus another 14 days plus another 21 working days, almost a little over two and a half months. Mm. And at that time, that was under the Kufour government, we were campaigning that this was way too long and should be you know, reduced even further. When the Mills government came into office, they said they were going to do a review, and we're very happy. We hope that the, the review will take up some of the reasonable concerns of civil society. Because indeed, your concerns and other persons' concerns were forwarded. Yeah, 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 precisely. They came back with a review, and they added the discretion to the minister to extend the timelines by further three months. Do we know why? I, I don't know why, I, but I, I can you know, offer a reasonable guess. It is simply to frustrate the process of people accessing information. There's absolutely no worldly reason why in the face of the complaints that already what you have was way too long, you go and further extend it by giving the minister the discretion to, to, to extend the time mm. by further three months. So really, they don't. They just want a document that they can wave at the international forum. That uh, yes, Ghana has a right to information law, but in terms of what it, it means for the citizens of Ghana, it will be just like the Ethiopian right to information law. H have you made your concerns known to the to Parliament's Constitutional and Legal Committee? Well, we. Um, I think it was under the Mills administration, we, we were asked to present for the consideration of, uh, of the select committee. A memoranda. Uh, our what views that? on certain aspects, certain specific aspects. That was after the committee had made a nation ra wa ra ra a nationwide um, consultation, mm. and some issues had come up everywhere they, they went. So they asked us to make proposals. And we gave them those proposals. We had a meeting with the select committee, and they assured us that almost everything that we had 
you know, uh, written had been taken on board mm. and included in the review thing. We asked them to give us a report. Up till now, we've not seen the report. And when the document came out, it, it, it turned out to be the same. There had been no mm. change. So a total, an exhibition of total bad faith on the part of our honorable men and women. They told us that they had, they had actually included almost everything we had proposed when in fact they had they had not even included one single proposal in their their, their review of the bill mm. so timelines is one of them another major problem that we have with the bill has to do with who should be responsible for its implementation and enforcement the bill says that is the minister for justice will be responsible for its implementation of and uh, how the enforcement. And we think that this, this, this position is completely untenable. Why? Because the Minister for Justice is a member of the cabinet, therefore he's very much a part of the government from whom people will be looking for information. And uh, will be part of the very government that may decide to refuse access. So if it is that minister who, is re who will be responsible for ensuring that the very government that is not ready to give out information gives out information in accordance with the law, I mean, how is he going to do that? It's, it's an untenable conflict of interest situation. It's, it's simply impossible for him to be doing something contrary to the, 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 the decisions of the cabinet of which he's a member. Mm. And beyond that, we all know that the Ministry of Justice, the Minister of Justice, doubles as Attorney General, and he is more more than overwhelmed. The Attorney General and Ministry of Justice, you know, Ministry are more than overwhelmed by just their core functions. So to ask that the minister, that same Minister for, for Justice, should be saddled with the implementation of this major, major, major legal initiative that is supposed to transform the political uh, culture of our society is to say that really we don't intend to pay much attention to it because the minister will simply have no time for implementation. What's your proposal? We want an independent information commission. As is the example in other jurisdictions. An independent information commission, of obviously appointed by the president, but uh, appointed under a procedure which ensures that those who get appointed are actually independent of the government of the day. Mm. Yes. If you look at the National Media Commission, yeah. for instance, I mean, you're asking for an entity like that. Yes, not necessarily. Uh, how do the National Media Commission is not appointed by, um, well, more or less, it's up, you know, appointed by um, uh, the, the president, yeah, more or less. But we are, we are asking for something similar, not exactly the same, but whose independence can be guaranteed in a manner like the National Media Commission. Mm. Yeah. And you think it can work effectively? Definitely. Definitely it will work effectively. If, if there's a good law and those responsible for its implementation and enforcement are independent of any political interest, why shouldn't it work well? Mm. It will definitely work well. And it seems to us that if we are all committed to an open and democratic gov government, there ought to be no disputation about this simple proposal. That take this thing out of the control of the executive. Because already Ghanaians have said over and over again, especially th through the processes of the Constitutional Review Commission, that our executive wields way too much power. So yes, 
under Article 195 of the Constitution, all appointments to public offices is by the government, so, uh, by the, uh, the, the president. So yes, the president will appoint them, but we propose a procedure of nomination which will ensure that whoever the president appoints are people that are independent. Mm. And who what, will do the job? Mm. Assistance now, what does the bill say with regards to information from the presidency? Well, that's another big issue. The bill says that any and all information uh, from the office of the president is exempt, apart from factual and uh, data. What, what does it mean? Figures. I don't know. It means that you can't, you can, once. The secretary to the office of the president, if you make a particular request for information from the office of the, sec of the president, mm. and the secretary certifies that this information cannot be given, that's the end of it. The same applies to the office of the vice president, the same applies to the cabinet. And we are saying that it makes no sense, it makes absolutely no sense to have such a blanket provision, we do admit that there will be certain types of information in the office of the president, in the office of the vice president, in the office of the cabinet, the disclosure of which would cause harm to a legitimate public interest. So those types of information ought to be exempt. Mm. But where you have a provision like what we have in the bill, which says that all and any <coughs> information in the office of the president is exempt. I think that it's, in my view, it is aimed at closing the door to the public as to what is going on within those offices. You know, how about the argument that uh, once you are there, once you are at that level, you mm. know how important it is to keep certain matters out of the public. No, no, no. That's not true. The first thing is that go to Article 1, Clause 1 of our Constitution. It says that the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana, in whose name and for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised in a manner consistent with the provisions of this constitution. What this means is that the office, no office in this country exists for itself. The office of the president doesn't exist for the good of the president. The office of the vice president doesn't exist for the vice president. Nor does the office of cabinet exist for the cabinet. They all exist for in the name and welfare of the people of Ghana. So we have a right to information about everything that is going on there, except where disclosure of that information will cause harm to the public interest. Who determines if a piece of information will cause harm to the public? First of all, we need the legal text to state so that Information shall be disclosed unless it causes harm to the public interest. What we have now is that information here will not be disclosed, whether or not its disclosure will cause harm to the public interest. Mm. That's what the law is saying. Who would determine whether it will cause harm to a public interest? Where there's a dispute, the courts always are, are, are the final uh, arbiters. Wherever there's a dispute as to issues of the parameters of public interest, it's the courts that determine it. And over the years, the courts have developed certain uh, principles by which they make those decisions. But at least we would know, and even the person, the, the, the secretary to the president will know that it is only where disclosure will cause harm to a legitimate public interest that he's empowered not to give out the information. And this is, this is, this is what will encourage transparency so that 
if you go to Article 21, uh, 1F, which actually guarantees the right to information as a fundamental human right, what it says is that every person shall have the right to information subject to such qualifications and laws as are reasonably necessary in a democratic society. Mm. So the Constitution already gives you the parameters within which there will be ex uh, exemptions, mm. that there must it be a necessity. OK, but isn't that enough? Uh, I mean, the Constitution is the overall. Yes, so I'm saying, so. That, I'm saying that it is better off. We are better off with, without with just that. I, I mean, if this is the kind of law we are going to get, then we are better off using the constitutional, the broad constitutional provision, than being handcuffed by this really, really bad law. Mm. Do we all understand these issues? I mean, the media in particular, because we look for a lot of information. Do we all understand the issues contained in this new bill? Well, that's one of the really very unfortunate um, aspects of this campaign for the right to information. Because over the, 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 the more than a decade s since this campaign was, was, was launched, I don't think that the Ghanaian media has taken the kind of interest that media elsewhere have taken in the right to information, you know. I think that we need the Ghanaian media to recognize that it has a stake, or they have a stake in this matter, that they should take up the issues and drive them, you know. Take up the really critical issues, drive them, bring the powers that be to their studios, hound them, let them explain and justify why we have such atrocious provisions mm -hmm. in our bill. When countries, neighboring countries that we claim we are far ahead of in terms of democratic credentials have a, have a far, far better right to information mm -hmm. law than we do. You know, how about the argument that whether there is a bill or not, I mean, whether there is a law or not, mm -hmm government officials will still not give you the sort of information that you require from them? Well, they have a price to pay. Because, you know, even this bill, bad as it is, if somebody refuses to grant information that he's obliged under the law to grant, he, 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 can, he can be penalized, he can be subject to criminal prosecution if he destroys information, and so on. So that's there's a, a price to be paid. Mm. So there's something good about this, isn't there? Oh. Well, you know, you can't, you, you can't pick little bits and pieces. You have to look at the bill as a whole. And if you look at the bill as a whole, you see that it is not good. Another, another, another area of our, our concern in the, in the bill um, has to do with the fees regime, you know. Where you have to pay a certain amount of money mm. for some information. Yes. Isn't that fair? I mean, after all, if they have to print, it would cost them. Precisely. So we are saying that you, the, the, the fees that you pay should be limited to simply the cost of reproducing the information that you want. Fair enough. But here, we have provisions which indicate that depending on the time and resources that the organization takes to retrieve the information uh, you, you are requesting for, you will be charged further fees. And we are saying that this makes absolutely no sense because what this thing does is to make the poor citizen pay for the inefficiency of record keeping of the agency involved. You go there, the agency has a very bad record keeping system, so it takes the agency, let's say, two weeks. It has to mobilize, let's say, 10 people to look for the information. So when you come to pay, you say, well, it's taking us two weeks, 
10 people working in only for two weeks, so pay so much. Why should a citizen under this law be made responsible for the inefficiency of an agency in its record keeping, you know, mandates mm -hmm. and so on? So we, s we say that that doesn't make any sense. Again, the, 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 the fees regime has application fee, relevant fee, an advance deposit, and so on and so forth, without any definition of what, what is the difference between the relevant fee, fee so-called, and an application fee, and, and, and the advance deposit, and so on. And what is really very atrocious is that where you make an application and the authority goes about looking for it and they say, oh, this thing may require some further searches, so pay a further deposit. And you pay an advance deposit. And eventually, they conclude that this is information that cannot be given to you. You are done. You, you can't get back your money. You've paid for nothing. Does it make any sense? No, seriously. Does it make any sense that people would actually pay uh, a relevant fee and a deposit <coughs> only to be told that the information they want will not be given to them and you cannot get back the money that you paid? So what are you, I mean... And this is supposed to be a fundamental right, mind you. It's a fundamental human, human right. Human rights. And actually... As long ago as 1945, the UN indicated that the right to information was, the, was a fundamental human right and the touchstone for the enjoyment of all other freedoms. So what are you doing to get um, other people to be on your side, if you like? I mean, what are you doing? And if I say you, I mean the coalition to carry all citizens on board well we, 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 we are engaging with the media because the media are the critical channel by which you can reach out to the population we want in this phase of the campaign for the, we want the media to see themselves as partners in this campaign secondly we hope that the leadership of parliament will be ready to engage with us in an open mind so that where we have valid proposals, legitimate proposals, they have the courage to take up those proposals and make the necessary amendments and reforms or reviews of this bill which would make it consistent with the provisions mm. of our constitution. Do you have plans of meeting them again? Oh, definitely. I mean, definitely. You know, we, are, we are hopeful that uh, the new legal and constitutional affairs select committee would have a, a far more open attitude to our proposals mm. than the past one. Do, do we also understand exactly where the bill is now? I mean, we know it's in Parliament, but They've what done, state? What state? The, the, it's at the stage where the, the committee is receiving memoranda. Okay. So it's, I mean, the, the deadline for the receipt of the memoranda is, is lapsed now. So the committee will start working on it, the select committee. We hope to have the opportunity. I think that Honorable Bagging had indicated to us that, you know, they'll, they'll be ready and willing to have a discussion with us. Mm. And we hope that, as I said, they'll be open-minded enough as to see the bill from the perspectives of the people of Ghana and good governance. I think that it's important that when you see some sometimes our politicians fail to see that today you are in government tomorrow you are out of government when you're out of government you see the significance 
of some of the proposals we are making. But when you are in government, you will not see it. I think that we, th we need to look beyond being in government and being out of government and ask what is good for the people of Ghana. Mm. Let me understand one thing, though. This bill, as it is, came from cabinet well, to parliament. Yes. So at this point, mm -hmm. can there be any changes? Yeah, of course. Cabinet, this, this is not a... Uh, uh, what, what, what you call a subsidiary legislation, wh which is just placed uh, uh, on the floor of parliament for 21 days and then it becomes law. No. This bill, parliament has the power to change every single provision in the bill if it thinks that is what has to be done. It has the power to do that. I think that we are appealing to parliament this, this is a major, major, major bill for our democracy. Just as the right to freedom of expression, which opened up the space for electronic media and, 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 and which electronic media have transformed completely the social, political, and cultural space in our country. A good right to information law would equally bring about a fundamental paradigm shift in power relations in this country. It will empower ordinary people, it will make government transparent and accountable and promote democracy for the good of all Ghanaians. So it is a very major bill, it's a major, major bill, and as I said from the very beginning, the people of Ghana, Ghana deserve something far, far better than the provisions that we have in this bill. But Mr. Kutompao, if your views and indeed your inputs were not um, taken into consideration yeah. uh, in the drafting stages, mm. why do you think that it would be considered at this point? Because I'm an optimist. And um, I mean, we, we've, we've lived through a period of military dictatorship when people were fighting for democracy. It didn't happen overnight, but they continued to fight, and eventually it came to pass. So in battling for rights and freedoms, you, you, you must know that you're not going to have it easy. You have to continue to push and push and push until you achieve your objectives. Mm. And so that, that's what we ought to be doing. That's what Ghanaians ought to be doing. I think that if Ghanaians really take up the issue of the contents of this bill and do not go asleep, if the media, if our mass media take up the contents of the bill, interrogate it and compel the authorities to justify some of the really, really atrocious provisions that they have in this bill, we may yet have a good right information law. Mm. Is this not, you know, the content of this? Is it not like like law that somebody can define it in another way and another person can take it from another angle? Well, not exactly, because, you see, we are not reinventing the wheel. This, this is, Ghana is not the first country that is passed or is in the process of passing a right to information law. You know, the first right to information law was passed in Sweden in the, in the 18th century, you know, 17 something, you know. And over the years, international standards and human rights norms and principles have been developed to determine what ought to go into a right to information mm. bill. So you know. this is not a matter of interpretation? No, no, it is. There are, there, are, there are questions of basic principles. And our law, our bill, flies in the face of some of the basic principles accepted internationally as uh, to govern a right to information law. Mm. And that is why we are asking Parliament to take a hard look at these provisions, have the courage for and on behalf of the people of Ghana to make the amendments that require mm. to be made. Yeah. Ordinarily, can uh, all of us also do something to get Parliament's attention drawn to, to oh, the yes, issues in this? Definitely. What can we do? Definitely. First of all, 
we should read and understand the bill. Okay. And then so it, access, access comes in. Yeah. How can we access this bill? Well, you can access it on the net. You can go to the um, assembly uh, press. The assembly press and, and, and get a copy. You know, purchase a copy, read it for yourself, and see whether what we are saying is true. Okay. So you're you're talking about how we all everybody can has get, a stake in this thing. Can and, get parliamentary and I, attention. And I'm saying that. The right to information is not some high following thing in the air. It has to do with the daily lives of our people in their communities. If in a district assembly money has been allocated for putting up a hospital or at a health center, through the right to information, a community can mobilize itself to see whether really that money is being used for for putting out. So it has a direct impact on the lives of our people. And that is why we should all be interested in the nature of the law that Parliament passes, because it will have a bearing on our daily lives. Mm. Mr. Kutampao, we'll bring you back again. Uh, hopefully, when Parliament invites you, and I'm talking about the NGOs and persons who have issues with it, mm. uh, would see how the issues, what you forwarded, um, how it is accepted, how it is incorporated in this bill. And then we'll have you back again uh, for us to talk a lot more on this issue. But thank you so much for your time. And I'm grateful. And I, I want to take this uh, opportunity to call out to the mass media that they have a stake in this matter and they ought to join us in this campaign and, and ensure that our parliament does right by the people of Ghana. Mm. Thank you so much. We wish you the best. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Mm.